Now, Tony Gallagher's Times reports today that Boris Johnson is expected to campaign for the Conservatives in red wall seats before the general election after a thawing in relations with Rishi Sunak. Um, I mean, you can probably guess where I'm going with this, but it is an hour for questions rather than the previous two hours of essentially just offering you the space to share your thoughts and feelings about something that brooks no debate, something that brooks no dissent, something that is objectively awful. So the Times claims, and Stephen Swinford, the political editor, is a very reliable reporter. He writes that Johnson allies, which pretty much means Johnson, and senior government sources confirmed that the former Prime Minister was expected to play a significant role in the general election campaign. And it focused my thoughts on something that had been bubbling under the surface for a while with regards to Boris Johnson. And it's something quite surprising, actually. Forgive me, because I, I, I know it's annoying sometimes, uh, and sometimes I do it when I don't really need to, and I promised I'd dial it down a little bit before the 25th of April when the paperback comes out. But in, my, in the book I've got out at the moment, there are 10 chapter headings, so 10 people that I consider to be most responsible for the breaking of Britain. Some of them are obvious and some of them are not. Boris Johnson would be among the most obvious, right? If you're looking at the state that the country was in by 2023, by the beginning of 2023, Boris Johnson is going to have his fingerprints all over many of the biggest problems that we are facing. But not only the, the reintroduction of racism into the mainstream of the Conservative Party and, of course, the removal of honest or at least honourable politicians from the Parliamentary Conservative Party, two of whom are, of course, among the only Tories today to come out and condemn the racism of Frank Hester, but, but also the madness of Brexit, the uh, complete delinquency, the lack of concern for anything or anybody except himself, the obvious and, and egregious proof that Boris Johnson's interests extend no further than the end of Boris Johnson's nose. The, the catastrophe of his COVID handling, the, the, the disaster of bringing Dominic Cummings into the heart of government, the, um, the, the, the circumstances of his departure from the House of Commons are almost unbelievable in their, uh, in their corruption. You know, he, he, he went because he was found by a committee of his peers featuring a majority of Conservative MPs to have lied to the House of Commons. And then subsequently he lied about lying to the House of Commons. And when presented with the inevitability of a recall petition, he didn't seek to defend himself or fight for his seat in Uxbridge and Ryslip. He left the House of Commons altogether, the political equivalent of taking your ball home. And the man ended his prime ministerial career in pathetic disgrace to the point where he was finally ejected by his own membership, by his own party. Ejected ultimately not for lying about parties or any of the other things he's lied about over the course of his career, both inside Downing Street and outside, but ultimately the straw that broke the camel's back was his, was his lies about the promotion of a man that he knew to be on the receiving end of several sex pest allegations. That, that, that was a pretty small straw in the great context of Boris Johnson's career, but it was for the likes of Rishi Sunak and Sajid Javid, who I think were the first to break cover, it was enough of a straw to break the camel's back. And it ultimately ushered, well, originally Liz Truss and subsequently Rishi Sunak into Downing Street. So he's an obvious contender for a, um, a place on a list of the people who broke Britain, how they broke Britain. But out of all 10 of them, Johnson is the one who, to me, seems to have slipped furthest away from relevance. It's really odd, this. And, and I, I, I wouldn't even have thought about it if I hadn't been updating the book for the paperback. But Johnson feels to me to be like a bad dream now. That even Truss, the consequences of Truss remain because she hasn't gone away. She's sort of doubled down on her economic madness. And with the support of all the Tufton Street vampires, she's allowed to pretend... Relevance. She's allowed to pretend re pertinence and she hasn't left Parliament, of course. The, the, the media players and the think tank players 
Dominic Cummings, I suppose, is the only competition Boris Johnson has for having sunk from relevance. But remember that Boris Johnson didn't care whether Brexit went through or not. He just did what he thought would be best for him. So in the end, he thought that supporting Leave would suit his ambitions better than supporting Remain. Dominic Cummings was the one who thought that there was some uh, Elysian field. There was some sunlit uplands. Dominic Cummings was the one that thought that it would improve our country's fortunes immeasurably. So for me, that, that legacy, the legacy of Brexit, has more to do with the media figures in how they broke Britain, the Paul Dakers, the Rupert Murdochs, the Andrew Neils, than it does with the political figures. The, the Boris Johnson is the only one, actually, and David Cameron, who, of course, didn't want it to happen, but who's incompetent as a prime minister and whose arrogance as a human being and whose hubris as a, as a politician was the large parts of the reason why why it actually happened, why we ended up in this silly old mess that we ended up in. So I'm putting it to you, and this is the kryptonite of radio phonies for me. This is the one topic that whenever I have to speak to students or um, uh, producers about what works and what doesn't work, this is the one thing that I say you should never, ever do on the radio. Because I don't think people care about Boris Johnson anymore. And the one thing you should never do on the radio is say, give me a ring if you don't care about the topic that we're discussing. But you know me. You don't have to be zany to work here, but it helps. Hey, 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 rules are made to be broken. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? I, I, I'll make it a little bit more sophisticated than that. You, you look at somebody like Nadine Dorries, um, not, not for too long because your retina will burn, but you look at somebody like Nadine Dorries and you see her insisting that the country wants Boris Johnson to come back, glossing over the lies, glossing over the deaths, glossing over the, the corruption, glossing over the, the myriad, myriad examples of his personal and political awfulness. You look at someone like Nadine Dorries and you know that, uh, and also, I mean, he let her down in the end. He lets everybody down ultimately. Poor old Nadine's not in the House of Lords, much to her fury. And you, and you know that not that long ago, there was a constituency that Nadine Dorries represented. I don't mean in Bedfordshire, um, uh, the, the one that she resigned from and then didn't resign for two months or three months. I mean a constituency of people across the country who thought that Boris Johnson was somehow their man. I think that has withered. I could be wrong. It's not a personal preference. I, I, I mean, I think it might be useful to... The Labour Party, if, if Boris Johnson goes out campaigning for the Tory party, I don't know. But I think what I see when I read that the former Prime Minister is likely to be deployed in the north of England and the Midlands, I see a London-based Tory party saying to themselves that those thickos in the regions, those plebs in the provinces, they're still going to fall for Boris Johnson's shtick. Just pause for a moment and think about what this story says about Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak decided that Boris Johnson's moral corruption and personal unsuitability were disqualifying factors, and I grant you it took him a long time to get there, but they eventually became disqualifying factors for him to continue to be Prime Minister. So Rishi Sunak is clever enough. Rishi Sunak is well-informed enough. Rishi Sunak is well-educated enough to see Boris Johnson for exactly what he is, uh, a self-obsessed, corrupt fraud. But the voters in the North and the voters in the Midlands, well, they still think he's great because they're not very bright or they're not very well informed or they've been groomed and gaslit for so long by the likes of Dacre, who gave Johnson a column in the mail, or Murdoch, who's got a front page story about him coming back to help campaign in the Red Wall, that these Northerners, these thick brummies, these daft Northerners, they still love a bit of Boris. The Parliamentary Conservative Party threw, his, threw him out on his ear. He was so persuaded that the good burghers of Uxbridge and Ryslip would send him packing that he didn't even have the guts to fight an election there or to take a recall petition. He, he, he left office in high, this unprecedented disgrace, more disgrace than any other prime minister, possibly ever. I haven't got the history to say that for certain, but for sure in living memory. And now we read in Rupert Murdoch's Times that he's going to join the election campaign in the Red Wall. I'm going to do something now that I should do more often. You're not allowed to ring me if you're in London. You're not allowed to ring me if you are in the South East. You are only allowed... To, in fact, you're not even allowed to ring me if you're in Scotland. You are... Although I've got a special full disclosure for you at the end of this week, so um, calm down. 
I only want to hear from people in the north of England and in the Midlands. Because the message today to you is this. Boris Johnson could persuade you to vote Tory. You are currently not intending to. You did so in 2019 because reasons. You believed him when he lied about an oven-ready deal. You believed him when he lied about getting Brexit done. You believed him when he lied about sunlit uplands. You believed him when he lied about making Brexit great again. You now see that you've been lied to. And therefore, you're not going to vote for the party that Boris Johnson led to an 80-seat majority, which is a problem for his successor, Rishi Sunak. But, my little northern friend, so boiled are your brains on whippets and flat caps that if they send Boris Johnson and his pantomime Toff Act back to Newcastle, back to Leeds, back to Manchester, back to Birmingham, back to Dudley, back to Wolverhampton, then you can be persuaded back into the Tory fold because Boris Johnson is still possessed of whatever magic dust it was that persuaded you to vote for him in the first place. So I'm only taking calls from the north of England and the Midlands. And the question you will answer is this. Is Boris Johnson a busted flush? Is Boris Johnson a soaking wet squib? Is Boris Johnson... A flat balloon, a burst football. Toast. I, I really, really think he is. I don't know about Wales, Julius. I'm not excluding Wales on purpose. I just don't know if... I don't think Wales counts as the Red Wall. And the Times reports that they're sending him to the north of England and the Midlands. So that's the, that's the constituencies that I'm interested in today. If you hit the numbers now, you can tell me whether or not Boris Johnson still carries electoral salience for you. In other words, are you the voter that Rishi Sunak has in mind when he arrives at the conclusion that sending Boris Johnson to the north of England and the Midlands would actually be good for the Tories at the next election? Because, I, I mean, this is one of those areas where my own biases may have blinded me to reality. Maybe there are millions of little Nadine Dorises running out out there, running around out there, convinced that Boris Johnson didn't do any of the terrible things that we know he did, and poised to vote Tory as a consequence of him getting re-involved in the election campaign. So 18 minutes after 12 is the time. That, that, is, the, I can't, that is the question that I'd like you to answer. I'm fairly confident, I'd, well, I'd say 52% to 48, that Boris Johnson, his... his his bolt is shot. He doesn't, he doesn't make me angry anymore. He used to make me furious because of the damage he was doing to a country that I love. He doesn't make me angry anymore. I don't know quite... It just makes me roll my eyes. Very much contempt for the con men, compassion for the con. Boris Johnson should never have been allowed anywhere near high office. He should never have been allowed anywhere near Downing Street. Everything he touched turned to... Shocking amounts of sewage in his hands. I, I, I mean, literally, the, the legacy of Boris Johnson is Liz Truss. The legacy of Boris Johnson is waters full of shocking amounts of sewage. It's, it's, it's Brexit. It's increased cost of living. Everything he touched turned rotten in his hands. And yet the contention this morning is that he can, he can win votes over.